changing the false start rule due to Usain Bolt, to Jan Zelensky's impact on the javelin throwing rules. Here are some notable track and field athletes who were so good that the rules had to be changed to level the playing field. Starting with Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world who really needs no introduction. It doesn't matter if you hold no interest whatsoever in track and field sports. There's no way you don't know Usain Bolt. He's considered the greatest sprinter of all time and is the world record holder for a 100 meter, 200 meter, and 4 by 100 meter relay. But that's not all. Bolt is also an eight time Olympic gold medalist and the only sprinter to win the Olympic 100 meter and 200 titles in three consecutive Olympics. So, as you'd expect, the International Association of Athletics Federations had to level the playing field, given just how much the Jamaican was dominating the sport. So, in 2010, they changed the rules to allow athletes one false start without disqualification. It was done in order to preserve the spectacle of Bolt's races. Because, let's be honest, everyone was tuning in just to watch him sprint. In fact, that wasn't the only rule change he brought to the sprinting world. He was such a menace that starting blocks had to be redesigned just to accommodate his long legs. Imagine being that good, but he's not the only one who had to deal with the introduction of new rules and regulations in running. Castor Semenya had to contend with this as well. The South African middle distance runner has been way too good. Compared to the rest of the competition she has to run with, over her career, Semenya has racked up two Olympic golds and three world championships in women's 800 meters. If that wasn't enough, she was also awarded the gold medals for 2011 World Championships and 2012 Olympics. After they found out that Maria Savanova had been using performance-enhancing drugs, but Semenya's dominance soon put her under a lot of controversy. She was asked to undergo testing in 2009, but she returned to win a year later. The thing is, Semenya by birth has naturally high levels of testosterone. Some argue that this gives her an unfair advantage over other female athletes. And this is where they decided to switch things up. The IAAF introduced a rule forcing her to take special medication to reduce those levels if she wants to compete. That didn't go down well with the South African, and she challenged this rule in court. It remains under review, so keep your eyes peeled for the latest on this one. Talking about runners and sprinters, you can't ignore what happened with Paula Radcliffe back in 2003. After all, it was one of the most crucial rule changes, which legitimately changed all sports in many ways. Back in 2003, the British long-distance runner Radcliffe set the women's world record in the marathon. She completed it in an insane time of 2 hours, 15 minutes, and 25 seconds. But as soon as her metaphorical victory lap was done, she started attracting a lot of criticism due to her use of a performance-enhancing substance that was later revealed to be a legal supplement, especially under the rules of the IAAF. But the IAAF had to take action because of all the backlash. They passed a new rule of requiring all supplements to be approved by the World Anti-Doping Agency. And the rest, as they say, is history. As far as sprinters are concerned, I've got another one. Michael Johnson and the 1990s Basically before Bolt, Johnson was the talk of the town when it came to making and breaking records. He was the fastest man in the world during the 90s and was just too dominant throughout the decade. You can probably recognize him for his distinctive upright running style something that hadn't been seen before in track and field or since. And his consistency was absolutely crazy. Johnson held the record for world and Olympic records in the 200 meter, 400 meter, and 4x400 meter and is remembered as one of the best sprinters in the history of track and field. However, his running style wasn't the issue. Authorities realized that races were getting too boring, so they decided to limit the length of spikes in track shoes. In order to ensure that he won't have any extra advantage while running, so bizarre, I'll just let you know that it didn't help because Johnson remained ever so dominant even after the rule change. This reminds me of a Ukrainian pole vaulter who took the world by storm during the 80s and the 90s. Sergei Bubka Does the name ring a bell? Well, it should. He set a total of 35 world records in the event, and his technique was a thing of beauty. It wasn't a surprise that Bubko would go on to win six consecutive IAAF World Championships and kept on breaking his own world record, becoming the first pole vaulter to clear 6 meters and 6.10 meters. In fact, his record stood for 21 years. Of course, when there's someone as good as Bubko was over two different decades, the authorities start interfering by trying to level the playing field. 
which is definitely unfair, but just how the world works. And so, they deemed his technique too dangerous, and the rules were actually changed to limit the length. Honestly, it's unfair, and definitely does not make sense. Because, in a way, you're putting a limit on an athlete's ability, and that goes against the point of the sport itself, doesn't it? People feel the same way about Edwin Moses, by the way. Another sensation. He was an American hurdler who dominated the 400-meter hurdles events throughout the 70s and the 80s. Two Olympic gold medals and multiple world records later, someone ratted to the authorities. And this is genuinely so stupid. Someone complained that Moses was only taking 13 steps between hurdles, while everyone else was taking 14. And that allowed him an unfair advantage. That makes no sense. Why can't others take advantage of this rule and go with 13? The problem was, the rest of the competition could not take 13 steps. And so, to even things out, once again the authorities bent the rules and forced everyone to take 14 steps. Unsurprisingly, a lot of analysts defended Moses and called out the authorities on the decision, but they didn't budge. Talking about unfair things, who can possibly forget Mary Decker, the world record holder and Olympic medalist in the 1980s? Now, Decker wasn't exactly a dominant star in the field, at least not as much as some of the other names on the list, but she was fairly good. If not for a collision during the 1984 Olympics, she could have been an Olympic gold medalist. Unfortunately, another runner, Zola Budd, ran into her, and Decker fell to the ground and was unable to finish. Budd would go on to win the race and the gold medal. The British sprinter was carried off the track in tears by her boyfriend, and that led to a historic rule change. An important one, too, which basically led to any athlete who obstructs or impedes another getting disqualified. That said, Decker, after many years, noted that it wasn't Bud's fault and that she was inexperienced and had no idea how to run in a pack. Talk about belated sportsmanship! And while we're on the topic of important rule changes, every long jumper should thank Bob Beeman. See, back in the 1968 Olympics, Bob broke a 23-year-old record. His jump of 8.90 meters was so far ahead of anything that the officials had ever seen that they had to measure it manually, because the electronic device simply didn't go that far. As a result, the rules were changed and the electronic measuring device was installed for all future jumps. But it seems that not every rule change is a negative one, like the Fosbury flop. The 60s were truly revolutionary when it comes to jumping, be it long jump or high jump and Dick Fosbury was one of the revolutionaries of that era, as he introduced a technique in which he'd jump over the bar backwards. In fact, it's so popular that for people who watched Olympics for the first time nowadays, probably can't even imagine that jumpers wouldn't jump backwards back in the 60s. Yeah, everyone does the Fosbury flop now, and it became so popular and dominant that the rules had to be tweaked to allow it. Others may have perfected it over the next five decades, but the man who truly changed the game was the one and only Dick Fosbury. However, other revolutionaries weren't that lucky. Take, for example, Jan Zelenzi, the javelin thrower from the 80s. Zelenzi was a sensation, particularly during the 80s. He broke his own record a total of four times and is easily considered the greatest javelin thrower of all time. But in 1986, the IAAF struck again. They never rest, do they? They deemed his throwing technique to be too easy and introduced a totally new javelin design, which would level the playing field for the rest of the throwers. I mean, I don't even have words for how unfair it was, but credit to the Czech superstar for recording a new record with a new javelin of 95 meters, and it wasn't broken until 2020. So from Jan Zelenzi's revolutionary javelin throw to Usain Bolt being too good for the rest of the competition, these were the track and field athletes who were just too dominant, forcing rule changes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.